Uh, so this is a strange one, can't believe I'm actually having to make this. Broly sexuals are at war with each other at the moment due to an argument between current Super Saiyan Broly that we saw in the most recent chapter, chapter 103 of the Dragon Ball Super manga, where he fought off against Gohan Beast against Broly Movie Broly using Super Saiyan full power. Now, a lot of people will say, well, this is obvious due to current Broly being, well, a current version of Broly and Super Saiyan full power Broly from the Broly movie being a past version of Broly, not just a past version of Broly, a Broly that was four arcs ago if you were to shoehorn a manga adaptation of the Broly movie into the continuity of the Dragon Ball Super manga. It is not quite as simple as breaking it down to that argument, but this fight certainly has a few caveats, but ultimately one of these versions is definitely stronger than the other and it's not close but we'll get to that the only way for broly movie broly to really be at the pinnacle of powers in a current arc is to basically go with the slow creep theory that is a big debate going on in the community at the moment whether these characters in bases grow at a fast rate or grow at a slow slower rate even though it's a few arcs later technically the superhero arc only takes place a few years after the broly movie events which isn't a particularly long time in dragon ball and ultimately the broly movie broly theory resides around the fact that blue fusion has been consistently put at beerus's level while some people argue that's been retconned not a argument that i agree with in the slightest by the way even though that doesn't reflect on my opinion in this particular verse battle we're covering right now that is the argument that blue fusion is beerus level and Super Saiyan full power Broly from the Broly movie was able to withstand big blows from that level of power in the Broly movie when we saw Super Saiyan full power Broly verse Gogeta Blue and obviously some people will even go as far as saying well the manga doesn't necessarily have Super Saiyan full power whether it does or not is hard to decide at the moment but ultimately it doesn't really matter Broly using some variation of a Super Saiyan form in the manga was still able to push Gogeta Blue to using an amped Kamehameha it's irrelevant really of course there are a few other conditions other than just the Beerus Blue Fusion comparisons and that is the likes of Moro being stated to be the toughest certainly something I think is a plausible argument for Broly Movie Broly not being the strongest but ultimately that can also be argued for toughest meaning the hardest to beat it did take them quite a long time to defeat Moro as opposed to other villains I think the only other one comparable and someone mentioned this in my comment section so the, guys I do read my comment section I do take all your arguments into account somebody stated well it actually took them a year in the time chamber to defeat Perfect Cell which is a very plausible argument but at the same time in the real world it actually didn't take them as long as it did with Moro the MC of the series Goku also was defeated by Moro multiple times until he eventually got Silver Haired Ultra Instinct whereas against Cell he didn't actually lose to sell once until fighting him in the cell games even though he then got defeated so there is that as well then of course there's the Whis comments in at the beginning of the granola arc where he states there's no one specifically stronger than goku and vegeta at that time obviously that brings into play the broly couldn't turn super saiyan argument which was denied by the broly denies for ages of course it turned out that he couldn't turn super saiyan leading up to chapter 103 where he actually eventually retained super saiyan which is the version of broly we're also talking about in this video but i have to talk about the lead up of why people are bringing up Broly movie Broly before we get there. So the Broly movie arguments really are built on a foundation of the fact that Broly was only in his base form when Whis made those comments to Goku and Vegeta about them being the strongest and that's why he stated specifically giving a condition to what he was stating. Then of course Broly could stack on Ikari, Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan full power and obviously the multipliers based on these transformations would elevate him back to the top of the rankings again. I think that's pretty much confirmed as we saw when Broly got Super Saiyan, it basically put him on Gohan Beast's level. And from all the information we have so far, this is likely just a regular Super Saiyan. So his base is pretty damn strong. We know it's at Super Saiyan Vegeta's level. We know in the Broly movie, however, that base Broly had gone way past Super Saiyan Vegeta. This implies that Vegeta has had a faster power creep than Broly has in their base forms. Since the Broly movie event, now, some people don't believe Broly has a Kari in the manga adaptation, which means that Broly in his base was able to push Goku and Vegeta to Super Saiyan Blue, which would actually make the power creep of Goku and Vegeta a lot faster in comparison to Broly's, but only goes on to help the Super Saiyan full power Broly movie version in terms of his overall raw power. Now, there are a few other caveats when it comes to arguing for Broly movie Broly being the strongest, but 
like I said, is mostly predicated on the fact that he somewhat scales to a Blue Fusion. Blue Fusion has consistently been put on Beerus's level. Some people, once again, argue that's been retconned. I don't agree with that at all. I did make a video on why Blue Fusion may still be at Beerus's level. And whilst Beerus is still the goalpost, it's not necessarily been moving. His goalpost was just simply never really truly set, except for at the level of Blue Fusion. And that particular argument is easy to get around if you actually just apply a slow creep theory, which is actually quite a strong theory. There's only really one arc, which is the Goku Black arc, which really goes against the grain in terms of the slow creep theory. But even then, there's a solid argument against that as well. Maybe I will cover the slow creep versus fast creep theories in a video soon. Let me know if you want that down in the comment section. But obviously what we know about Super Saiyan Full Power Broly from the movies is that in terms of his control over the form, it would have been pretty shoddy in comparison to the control he has over his Super Saiyan form right now. We know from his training with Goku and Vegeta on Beerus's planet recently that going into this state is basically losing all sense of himself in all control and it's basically just him going berserk and rampaging where they are at the point where they fear the planet will get destroyed despite even Whis and Beerus being present. Not to mention the fact that they can both use Ultra Forms to stop him and even if that wouldn't work they could also just fuse again. I mean really Whis should be more than enough to stop Broly from destroying the planet anyway. But ultimately, the point I really want to hone in on is the fact that in this form, Broly had lost sense of self, didn't have much control. He has incredible adaptation rates in this particular form. It is as described by Kaba when referring to Kel. We know that these two forms by Broly and Kaba are intended to be the same. Even if they do have slightly different names in terms of what they've been coined by the franchise, I do believe that will change soon, personally but they are implied to be the same by guides that essentially their power just keeps building and they can adapt to their opponents as they fight so they do actually improve in terms of martial arts ability but that's not to the degree of say a Goku and Vegeta in terms of their martial arts abilities. The only problem for Goku and Vegeta against Broly is that Broly was just that much stronger than them that their fighting abilities were essentially mute. They didn't serve as equalizers, as I've argued in other videos, that if powers are close enough, close enough to each other, that martial arts abilities, hacks can serve as equalizers to greater power. But there is a certain margin where that becomes irrelevant. As we see with Kale in the Tournament of Power, she is stronger than the Pride Troopers. And while she is fighting against quite a few of them at the same time, they do eventually start to use strategy and techniques to actually give her a lot of trouble, despite her being vastly stronger than them. This is supported by Vegeta's statement saying brute power Power is useless unless it can connect. Like I said, there's a certain margin where it will be impossible for it not to connect. And obviously, Broly had that type of margin over Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta at the time. It was huge. Super Saiyan Broly was at a Super Saiyan fusion level. And obviously, that's potentially 50 times stronger than the Super Saiyan Blue forms Goku and Vegeta at that time. That type of creep is actually quite big to make up over the course of a few years since the Broly movie to the superhero movie. It's not impossible, but then factor in a blue fusion multiplier over the Super Saiyan blue forms of each individual fusey. This is why that particular theory is getting a lot of traction now. In fact, I would say it's growing in support and it's growing in evidence. But the whole Vegeta statement about brute force basically being useless if it can, cannot connect is very relevant to this particular verse battle I'm doing now. So obviously what we have now is Broly who can turn Super Saiyan again. He has the pupils indicating that he's gone into a controlled Super Saiyan state. I know a lot of people keep referencing the anime Tournament of Power where Kale got control over her Berserker form in the anime, but I don't really think that necessarily applies here. So guys, what I've noticed about conversations, even though a lot of people do get it, there are a lot of people that don't get that when somebody's saying someone's stronger in terms of raw power reserves, they are strictly talking about that itself, their raw bank of power, how much overall power they have, even if they don't have full access to it in a completely reliable way. Even if we go back to the Broly movie, you could say that Goku and Vegeta in Super Saiyan Blue are stronger than Super Saiyan Broly in terms of their martial arts abilities. However, when you bring into Broly's raw power overall, it becomes a complete mismatch. So it can be used specifically like that and given conditions like that. In this particular instance, however, we are talking about their raw power reserves. Now, as I stated before, full power Super Saiyan Broly doesn't necessarily have complete control over his power. Against Gogeta Blue, he is getting completely and utterly annihilated, he's getting beaten up. However, he does have the resistance and durability to withstand Gogeta Blue's 
blows. The only time where it looked like Broly would be truly defeated is when Gogeta goes for the Kamehameha, which is an amped attack anyway, as we know. So what this could suggest is that Broly just doesn't know how to use his power offensively in a meaningful way. Going back to that Vegeta statement in the Tournament of Power, unless brute power can connect, it's pretty much useless. And as we see, even in the movie version of events, and I know people like to distinguish the differences between the continuities, which is fine, but even the portrayal from Toriyama's own pen depicts Gogeta constantly just finessing Broly and landing and popping off shots all over the place. We know that in Dragon Ball, a character can have much greater raw power, but if they do not know how to utilize that power, then they can be hit by far weaker characters. Just look at Cell Max, a mindless beast that's just been born. It's essentially a baby with stupid amounts of raw power, and even the likes of Krillin are hitting him. This is because Cell Max does not know how to utilize his power in a meaningful way. However, he can do it every now and again, but his defenses are constantly there. So no matter how much they're landing on him, no matter how good of a blow they land, his defenses are tapping into that raw power that he has and defending him from these attacks. You could say the same thing happening for Broly against Gogeta Blue. His defense, which would have been amped by his raw power reserves, were protecting him from these blows from Gogeta Blue. That is why a lot of people do argue that Broly, despite landing nothing offensively against Gogeta Blue, was at the level of Gogeta Blue because his defense showed that he had the power to deal with these attacks. And for those that state that Broly would have got a Zenkai after those movie events, well, you have to be at a near-death situation to get a Zenkai, and you, Broly was still in Super Saiyan by the time Gogeta was amping up that Kamehameha, so was he really close to death at that point? It, he was beaten up, certainly, but close to death? I have my doubts. We also know that in terms of training, despite being on Beerus' planet for a month, he hasn't made much progression at all. He's finding fighting tricky, and as we talked about earlier, Vegeta in base has had a faster power creep than Broly has in base since the Broly movie. Yet still, going regular Super Saiyan, like I said, likely a grade 1 Super Saiyan, not even a grade 4 Super Saiyan, Broly was able to be somewhat relevant to Gohan Beast. But to get to those levels and to be at ultra levels by just going Super Saiyan without Akari and Super Saiyan full power is incredible. Not only that, he now has some control over this form. So even if you was to argue that Broly Movie Broly had more raw power reserves than Controlled Super Saiyan Broly, Controlled Super Saiyan Broly can actually use his power in a much more meaningful way. And I'm going to bring up a graphic in just a moment to put this into perspective. As I know a lot of people really care about this argument, I don't want to give a false impression of this argument. But ultimately, what I am trying to say is that this current version of Broly, even if he was to be weaker, and I'm saying if, then he has much more control over this form and can use his power for in a much more meaningful way than Broly Movie Broly could. Broly Movie Broly was just going berserk and his power was out of control. Would he have been able to tap into his max power every now and again? Sure, but that's what this whole story has become about, is being able to use your power efficiently and with precision. That's what makes Ultra Instinct so special. That's what makes Jiren being able to use nearly 100% of his power completely efficiently so special. They are next level fighters. Broly isn't that. Even with controlled Super Saiyan, he is nowhere near that. In fact, Gohan Beast, who we see getting out experienced, out skilled by Ultra Instinct Goku, despite a raw power advantage, is more skilled and more experienced than Broly is. Beerus makes that distinction in basically the next panel after Broly is literally getting tossed around. Now guys, some people will use that to say Gohan's definitely stronger, but characters of equal measure, in fact, even characters slightly weaker, can do that to their opponents. I only really scale now off match defining feats and landing a push or a toss certainly isn't that. Whilst I wouldn't discount them fully, I just don't think they should be grand stood. But be like I said, Beerus makes the case of Gohan has more control over his form as opposed to Broly who's only just tapped into Super Saiyan and doesn't have as much control over his form and that's why he's lording Gohan and we suggest Gohan as a potential god of destruction because even if we go back to the whole notion that Blue Fusion and Broly have a level of power matching that of Beerus as stated in the Broly movie by Goku, Broly has no control over the form, so he would just be a rampaging god of destruction if he was to ever become a god of destruction, but I think it's fair to say even if you believe in the slow power creep, by now, given the boost in power that Broly's had, him at Super Saiyan full power and a controlled Super Saiyan state wouldn't be that far behind the Broly movie events anyway, and if you take into account fast creep, then 
a Super Saiyan current Broly would be stronger than a Super Saiyan full power Broly. If we go by the slow creep, because that's what people keep arguing and that's what people are falling out about, then even so, this current Super Saiyan Broly, with the little bit of training that he's done, the fact that he has his mind intact, unless you take into account that the Broly movie Broly would still continuously keep growing in power, and there is an argument there that he had actually capped off against Gogeta Blue, so that's the version we're using. A current Super Saiyan Broly would have the tactical know-how on how to deal with just Broly movie Broly's raw power advantage if he has it. If he doesn't, then this battle is really one-sided. But ultimately, the kicker is that current complete Super Saiyan Broly still has the potential to go Super Saiyan full power or legendary Super Saiyan. Okay, yes, you could argue that he would need to snap further and lose control of himself again to become this particular transformation. Ultimately, it's in the bag. If Broly movie Broly is beating up on this current Broly, Broly's likely going to lose it and go into the exact same form, and his raw banker power reserves would simply be higher than what it was in the Broly movie. So if he's to go into that form again, his raw power reserves, even if he doesn't have full access to them, because I don't believe even a current Broly would have full access to the raw power reserves, he would be much more adept at using his full power. This fight wouldn't be close. And even if you wanted to grandstand the blue fusion at Beerus's level, even then you could say, well, this current Broly, if he went into that form, if he went into that state, he would likely surpass the blue level forms of fusion and be even stronger than Beerus. After all, even in the manga, we know that Black Freezer is close to Beerus. Gohan Beast and Black Freezer is a debate to be had and I'll be covering it on my channel very soon. But Gohan is literally suggested as a god of destruction by Whis because of his raw power reserves and control over that raw power. And we already know from chapter 101 that Goku was told that he would have to surpass Beerus in order to become the god of destruction. Obviously we know these characters don't want that role but you could argue that the prerequisites to become a god of destruction for Universe 7 have been set and it's based on power and control of that power. The fact is we really have to make it so that current Broly cannot go into Super Saiyan full power just to make him make Broly movie Broly have any single chance at all. And I do think there is an argument for his overall raw power reserves being at a similar level to com current complete Super Saiyan Broly or even beyond that because he might be at Beerus' level and complete Super Saiyan Broly currently probably is just shy of that given he's around Gohan Beast's level. Broly's issue isn't necessarily his raw power bank reserves, no matter which state of Broly you're looking at. It's his accessibility to that power and the fact that he cannot use it reliably. I offer to you that Goku's Beerus comparison in the movie and Freeza's statement concerning Broly being the strongest if he got his power under control is referring to his higher ends of his raw power reserves that they could sense from him, not necessarily what he was outputting in the Broly movie, at least not offensively in any meaningful way. The series has simply been moving in that direction ever since Goku got Ultra Instinct, the ability to move and wield that power efficiently now has much more meaning than what it did in Dragon Ball Z. Anyway guys, that's all I've got to say today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I look forward to reading them. Until next time, Ad Astra.